The app search tool can be found by going to the upper right corner of the editor and indicating how you want to search through the application itself. So for example, if I want to search by element type and choose text, I'm just gonna search for it here. If I click on search, it's gonna show me all instances in my entire application where I'm using a text element. Doesn't matter what the text content is itself, um, whether it's you know static text or dynamic, as long as I'm using a text element, that's what's going to be revealed here in this list. So in this sample application, I have 24 instances of text elements. And you can see that bubble will show me the page that these elements are on. If I check only search current page, then of course, it's only gonna reveal the elements on the page that I'm on right now. So I have these three text elements here. I can click on this and uh, it's gonna highlight that for me. Now, here's a pro tip for you. Use this app search tool as a checklist. Whenever you are making major structural changes to your app's database, use this as a checklist to find any instances of data types, fields, option sets that you might be changing so that you can address all areas in your app. This is gonna be super helpful if you have a really large application. Here's what I mean, here's an example. On this page, I have three different text elements that all refer to the current user's, or I'm sorry, to the user's first name, not necessarily the current user. This particular expression here is saying current user's first name. In this expression, I'm doing a search of users of my entire user table. I'm going to the first record in that table. So that may or may not be the current user going to their first name. Here's another uh, instance where I'm referencing that first name. I'm doing a search and I'm filtering on the first name here. So let's say I want to delete that first name field. I'm gonna go into my data structure. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this field. Here's the problem. If I had not addressed those three instances, those first name references are still gonna kind of be stuck there. It could create problems for me. Notice that the issue checker only revealed one of my references to the first name field, right? It was this one here with the search because I can no longer constrain on it. So Bubble was able to remove that for me. The better thing for you to do is before you delete, use the app search tool to find those instances and use them as a checklist for addressing them so that you can replace uh, the old the old instance, right? If I'm about to delete something, that means that I no longer want these expressions to reference this field. I'm gonna change it to something else, or maybe I'm gonna end up deleting the element altogether. And this goes not just for elements, but conditional expressions, workflows, uh, aspects of your design, styles that you've added, right? Maybe you're replacing a, a style in some way. This will work for all of those scenarios. So what I would do instead, let's restore this to kind of reset ourselves here. Before I delete that field, I would pull up the um, search tool. And here, I don't wanna search by element type that's too generic, right? I could have many, many, many text elements that have nothing to do with that first name field. Instead, I would search by field specifically, okay? And the field is in the user data type. The field itself is first name, right? I could get super specific here. If I uncheck this again, I can search my entire application. So I'm gonna search. And I again have three instances. It looks like the only place I'm using this is on this page here. Now, if I select this, Bubble's going to highlight it for me. Let's say I wanna change this over to my last name. I'm getting rid of the first name field and I only wanna use the last name field. Okay, so I'll change it over to last name. This expression is no longer referencing the first name. If I click search again, now I'm down by one. This is my to-do list. This tells me how many more instances I need to address in some way before I delete that field so I can safely delete it. And I don't end up with these orphan references pointing to something that's just gonna be broken. Click on the next one here. Again, let's switch this out for last name, click search. Okay, so now I'm down to my last reference. I'm gonna click on this again here. So it's highlighting this search where I have the first name and the constraint. So I'll change the constraint over to last name. Let's say last name equals uh, Doe and I'll remove this constraint, right? I'm addressing it. How you address it just depends on what you're doing. I'm gonna search. Now I can safely say I am no longer using that first name field anywhere in my application, so it is safe to delete.
This is just one use case of that app search tool that can really help you move through your app's development much more efficiently. So get in the habit of using it, especially as your app starts to grow. You know, something that's going to help you leverage the app search tool uh, the most is being really consistent with your labels. Make sure you're labeling everything in your editor. I promise it's going to make uh, for a much better development experience.